After creation and subsetting, the final piece of the Python lists puzzle is manipulation. So ways to change elements in your lists, or to add elements to or remove elements from your list. Changing list elements is pretty straightforward. You use the same square brackets that we've used before to subset lists, and then assign new elements to it using the equal sign. Suppose that after another look at fam, you realize that your dad's height is not up to date anymore, as he is shrinking with age. Instead of 1.89 meters, it should be 1.86. To change this list element, which is at index 7, you can use this line of code. If you now check out fam, you'll see that the value is updated. You can even change an entire list slice at once. To change the elements list and 1.73, you access the first two elements with 0, colon, 2, and then assign a new list to it. Do you still remember how the plus operator was different for strings and integers? Well, it's again different for lists. If you use the plus sign with two lists, Python simply pastes together their contents in a single list. Suppose you want to add your own name and height to the fam height list. This will do the trick. Of course, you can also store this new list as a new variable, famx for example. Finally, deleting elements from a list is also pretty straightforward. You'll have to use del here. Take this line for example, that deletes the element with index 2, so emma, from the list. If you now check out fam again, you'll see that the emma string is gone. Because you've removed an index, all elements that came after emma scooted over by one index. If you again run the same line, you're again removing the element at index 2, which is Emma's height, 1.68 meters now. Understanding how Python lists actually work behind the scenes becomes pretty important now. What actually happens when you create a new list, x like this? Well, in a simplified sense, you're storing a list in your computer memory and store the address of that list, so where the list is in your computer memory, in x. This means that x does not actually contain all the list elements, it rather contains a reference to the list. For basic operations, the difference is not that important, but it becomes more so when you start copying lists. Let me clarify this with an example. Let's store the list x as a new variable y, by simply using the equal sign. Let's now change the element with index 1 in the list y, as follows. The funky thing is that if you now check out x again, also here the second element has changed. That's because when you copied x to y with the equal sign, you copied the reference to the list, not the actual values themselves. When you're updating an element in the list, it's one and the same list in the computer memory you're changing. Both x and y point to this list, so the update is visible from both variables. If you want to create a list y that points to a new list in the memory with the same values, you'll need to use something else than the equal sign. You can use the list function, like this, or use slicing to select all list elements explicitly. If you now make a change to the list y points to, x is not affected. If this was a bit too much to take in, don't worry. The exercises will help you understand list manipulation and the subtle inner workings of lists. I'm sure you'll do great.